Lähdetään ajelemaan Lahti Basketballin pelaajien kanssa. Ensimmäinen sisään, the first one to ride meidän jenkkivahvistuksista, Antonio Ballard. We throwin' bloopers. <laughs> yes, we do. Antonio, what what's up, up man? man? You good? Welcome to the ride. Carpool karaoke. The Finish ride. Style. <laughs> Are you Did ready? Do I, do I look like James Corden? Do I look like James Corden, man? Nah, man. I, no seatbelts in the back. Uber. All right. All like right. So, control, so baby. you're ready for the interview? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always. So, Antonio, it's safe to say that you've had a long career in basketball and you've seen many places. Uh, how would you compare Lahti with all those other places and how, how has Lahti treated you? Compared to other places? Yeah. Okay, first off, code. Uh, <laughs> secondly, no, you guys have treated me very well. Um, normally, um, going to places, uh, different teams, different organizations, you go to uh, places that uh, treat you well. At least I've been fortunate enough to been to places that treat me very well. So, um, but Lati has uh, also treated me very well, and it's a reason why. I stay here because um, money's one thing, but the way that you treat a player and things like this go a long way. So I'm very fortunate to be where I am here in Lati. All right. So uh, it's it's been a weird time with COVID and all that, and um, I don't know how much you've actually had the chance to interact with Lati people outside of the team. But if we're talking about the team. Um, How would you describe Lahti basketball as a as a basketball club? If you're thinking about the club itself. Yeah, if I'm thinking about the club, you mean like the players or like just uh, the uh, the GM and uh, back and, and everybody, okay, and, uh, yeah, well, whole right, staff and let's, staff let's, and how we do stuff. Let's start in the office then. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the GM and all you guys that uh, hold this this like the glue behind the scenes, uh, not to mention the fans are you guys are great i mean definitely not um what i'm used to as far as like how involved the gm is like nice. he pulls up in the morning shoots with us like stuff like this like mm -hmm. i feel like he wants to be a, a gm coach some our gm player sometimes but <laughs> he's uh he's real good and um i mean that's something that helps uh all of us grow like chemistry on and off the court mm -hmm. and as far as the team go if i described our team like we do very well as like when we're on the road and we try to like like mix the scene up i know i do i'm all over the place i'm with the finnish guys i'm with the uh americans i'm i'm all over the place but um on the court i think if we were to describe ourselves i would say we're young mm -hmm. um we have a lot of heart and we have a lot of fight and um even our gm and just the whole system's young as well like I'm up there with like the gym is like a couple years older than me, which makes me feel like I'm older than I should be. But uh, I think I'm where I'm supposed to be. So, yeah, it's, it's real good. I love the uh, chemistry and connection that I have with everybody from from the people you do see on the mm -hmm. court and the people that you don't see behind the scenes. All right. That's nice to hear. That was that was an excellent answer. So um, basketball wise. It's been a challenging season. We, we have to admit that. And uh, As a player, uh, you came in in the middle of the season, and uh, how has this turbulence, <laughs> what we've been facing, uh, uh, how has that felt uh, for you as as a player? Well, for me, I see I've been on teams where there's plenty of turbulence. Turbulence, excuse me. I've been on teams where there's uh, smooth sailing as well, mm -hmm. and I know that because of our situation particularly, that we're going to be okay. I really do feel that and I believe that. And if the guys believe that as well, I think that we're going to be, that we're going to be fine. We're not in a terrible position because we haven't had, since I've been here, we have not had our full team. And I mean, like, right. to me, that's, if you're looking for a silver lining out of all of this, um, I think that's, uh, that's good. Because once we have our full roster, once we have all our weapons and we can, like, use everything that we have, I think that we'll then start to do what we are supposed to do. So um, 
I don't mind where we are right now. I think uh, we've had a lot of player changes, a lot of injuries and things like that. So just to hit on what I just said, once everybody comes back, we'll be fully loaded and we'll be ready to go. I do believe that. All right. My next my next question uh, was about to be <laughs> how would you see the team's potential, but you kind of you kind of <laughs> took on that already. So it's it's safe to say that. You think that uh, that the club at the moment that we we have potential to go deep in the spring? Yes, I definitely do. I definitely do. Now I know I feel that because I've been in these situations before. So it's not. It's like I'm speaking from experience a little bit. But everybody has to be on board. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how other guys are feeling about it. But if we all are on board and we all got each other's backs and we, you know, it's just like never giving up type thing. And like I said, we're not even, it's not even like we're in a bad position. I, right. I don't mind where we are right now. Like, I think when we come back where we are and we start with and we build our confidence and we'll have as much confidence as we're supposed to have when we're supposed to have it entering playoffs. Nice. Uh, so your, um, if we're thinking about the ordinary guy, <laughs> and uh, comparing your profession to that, uh, you're in a profession that takes you around the world, mm -hmm. and uh, you're you're far away from home, many months in in a year. Mm -hmm. What are the things that uh, the things that you uh, miss the most while playing away from home? Uh, obviously, is uh, my people. You know, I miss my people from back home, um, friends, family, close ones, loved ones, and um, I, I'm a big foodie. So oh, I miss really? I miss a lot of food, uh, oh. specific foods and things like this. Like for me, if I'm speaking specifically, I mean cereal. Now you guys have uh, stores out here that have American sections and things like that, but right? When I tell you y'all are taxing for the. Uh, <laughs> But like the price of cereal out here, like I'll get it, but I'm gonna be complaining. Even when I'm eating it, I'm like, I can't believe I just did this. But then I'm like, I believe I did it. Like anybody that knows me, like that's 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 <laughs> huge for me. But obviously missing my family and friends and um and uh the food for sure. Now I have friends and family since I've been playing for so long. I have family like friends and very close people to me that are near and dear to me that are in Europe as well. So um so that helps as well because sometimes when we get like a little time off or something people can come see me and travel and things like this i'm on the same time as them so they can like as far as conversation flow goes that's good mm -hmm. you know who you are you know what i'm saying so that there it's like uh i miss a lot of things but i'm also i adapt, I adapt and adjust very well i've been doing it for a while i don't get homesick and, and yeah so that, that's good all right Uh, so, um, as a pro basketball player, how would you describe your ordinary day at the job? <laughs> like how, how does your day go as a pro hooper? Uh, well, for me, it also depends on where you are, what country, what you know, what I'm saying, what the weather's like, what the scenes like, and things like this. I know COVID has taken a toll and put a toll on a lot of things as well. But for me. I pretty much do the same things more or less like I'll wake up in the morning or you know whenever I get up and I'll go to practice and mm -hmm. I'll I'll usually like uh, get something to eat um, obviously and then I always lift I always work out like um, whether it be um, lifting or sometimes I just go to the gym just to uh, stretch and do some like rehabilitation type stuff so mm -hmm. um, when I'm not in our gymnasium I'm in the fitness or I'm at home and you know because those are places where I'm comfortable and you know I don't really do too much I eat sleep I um, work out and I train and I just try to keep my body in shape and try to keep up with these young bucks <laughs> so is there when you have your rare time off outside of basketball Uh, um, what are your uh, hobbies or what, what would you like to do when when you're off from work? Uh, okay, so when I'm off, it's not like I'm really ever truly off just right. because of the way that I'm built, the way that I do things. Like, I can't be still. Like, you know, 
I mean, if I'm still, then there's a problem. <laughs> so I'm usually, like I said, in the gym or uh, when I am relaxing, like after I do the gym, after I hit the gym and things like that, I'll watch Netflix like everybody else in this world. And, <laughs> you know, I'll eat and I might doze off and I'll just reconnect with people or um, I'm actually like trying to learn another language. No, it's not Finnish. Uh, I'm working on, I know, right? <laughs> I'm working on uh, Spanish oh. uh, for different reasons. And I'm just, I would like to be able to speak another language. I know I travel, I see uh, many players, many people who know multiple languages and um, I would just like to communicate on another level with people. Yeah, that's always that's, cool. Yeah, I know. I think it's so smooth, man. It's real nice. And I know like uh, Spanish is a very, very like well used, um, especially yeah. in the U.S. as well. So, right. you know, nice. That's that's good to hear. It's always always great to learn new stuff and educate yourself. So. Exactly. So that's that's good to hear. So um, we're sitting in a car in Lahti, Lahti city, and mm -hmm. I, I just have to ask because I'm I'm a born and raised Lahti guy. So, what's your favorite place, favorite spot in our city? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, I haven't been to your house, so... Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry favorite... for that, man. <laughs> a lot of diapers. And, that's and that's me inviting myself. No, but, <laughs> yep. um, but my favorite place, ooh, that's tough. Um, that's a tough question for me. Um, now, my most frequent place besides my house, because we obviously can't name our homes probably, but <laughs> in, a, yes, you can. in the gym, oh, which, <laughs> you know. Um, but I would say either K&M, um, which is the workout facility, mm -hmm. or... Pellery, oh, probably right. Pellery because I get food, food there. Guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get food there, so yeah. I don't know. That's that's a tough question for me, and yeah, that's yeah, that's that's tough. I don't know, but obviously, you know, most guys will probably say their homes because when you're outside of practice, besides when you're going to places, the place that you probably spend your most time would be one of your favorite places, and that's home for me. I mean, I enjoy my me time. I'm not. Like I'm, I'm hardly ever bored, even when I'm alone. Like I'm self-entertained, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, that's just how I'm built, and I love that about me personally. Well, that that has to be, that has to be an uh, kind of a edge for you, because when we're thinking about your profession, that if if you easily homesick, can, can't be alone. That, oh, that, yeah. that has to suck. So yeah, it good does. For you. It does for sure. I've seen. Trust me. I've seen guys lose jobs or like leave jobs mm. because they get homesick. They can't focus. It affects yeah. their their game on the court, and you know they'll they'll miss an opportunity because they get homesick, and then they get closer to home. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's get deep. What's your what's your dream, Mr. Ballard? What what do you dream about? What is your dream in life? What is my dream? Yep. Well, when I the sleep, ultimate, the ultimate dream. When I sleep, I don't even, I don't <laughs> dream at all. But <laughs> man, uh, you know, I just want to be, I want to be alive. You know, like health is wealth. I know, like I want to be successful. I want to be um, an example to my family. Mm -hmm. um, just like I, because I think I'm a role model in a lot of ways that I didn't even know that I was. So if I can just uh, continue to grow as a man. And really to uh, grow as a Christian, and look, don't y'all forget this, God's first, man. Like, uh, when I wake up, I thank God for everything I have in my life, don't have, and things don't working for and towards. Just for him to prevail um, and guide me in life. So um, I think if I can stick with that, and it's a battle, you know, it, it's tough, it's hard. And if I stick with that, I think that um, my purpose and my future and things like that will fall in line. So... Um, I mean, there's so much that people can dream about, but for me, I, um, my ultimate goal would be stuff that a lot of guys have, and that's a family, you know, like my own family and just being, you know, the, the father that I didn't necessarily have and just, you know, raising my children and being happy and, mm. and being, um, as good as I can be that example for my children and my future family and things like that. Wow, that's that's great. I can I can surely vouch for family being a family man, and yeah. uh, that's that's 
that's been amazing for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you, you will make a great dad one day. So yeah. So for right now, I just so. play with uh, everybody else's kids, and then be like, "Yep, go home now. Like get out of here." When they start, like I'll play with uh, with uh, Leon, who's the GM's uh, son. I'll yeah. mess around with him, and then when he throws his little fit, I'm like, "Yep, daddy time. Go get him. Come get him." <laughs> Ain't that fun for me no more right now? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So now we're, we're doing this interview in a, in a car and um, I'm a music guy, you probably know. And, and uh, Top I, five, I, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bang my music, uh, not my music, but, but, the, but the music that I, I love, that I, I, I like to get deep into it. And the best place for me to listen to music is, is my car. Yeah. So Antonio Ballard, what are your top three car tunes when you when you're driving and you bang out some music do you have man, a, you that, just want to crank it up man that's like ask me what's my favorite movie like <laughs> that's if always you're a parent fun. if you're a parent and you have multiple children who's your favorite child like <laughs> <laughs> that, that's tough man that's very tough for me to answer but um and it's you know the crazy thing is i was low-key prepped about this answer they was like you, you might get asked what's your favorite song Right. And I was like, one? And so I was just trying to think of one, but now you get in here and you ask me three. And <laughs> yeah, let's make it I easier. Mean, that's, that's tough, man. That's tough. Like, it's just like if I asked you the question, do you have a favorite song of yours? Do you have a favorite song? In the world. Favorite song in the world. I, I yeah. know. Uh, I just I always, took over this interview, by the way. Yeah, I just yeah, flipped yeah, it to I, you. I, I always <laughs> surprise people because cause, cause I'm a rapper. Yeah. And I will be that for, till the death of me. But I think the greatest song in the world is November Rain by Guns N' Roses. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. That's just amazing. A lot of people might not know that. Y'all go home and look that up. <laughs> yeah. And then and then y'all start DM and Brady talking about what? <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, I think the greatest greatest rapper of all times is Jay Z. So um, I respect that. I uh, know, but something specific to bang bang in the in the car. Maybe some red man or or, or myth or oh, yeah. some like like like, sure. like mid mid nineties stuff, school. but it's it's really really hard to pick one. Yeah. Okay. So for but, me, it it all depends on my mood. Like I'm an R&B guy. Like cool. I mean, I'm really like. So your favorite place to bang out and listen to music is in the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes it depends on when I'm driving and where I'm going, how far of a distance I have. I'll, I'll use that time to like pray. Like I won't even be nice. even listening to music, but when I'm at home in the shower and stuff like here, I love, this is one of the top things I love about uh, Finland is the sauna. So when I get my sauna and my shower and I'm jumping back and forth and I got my music going, man, it's, it's so much going on and I'll be in there having somebody's concert and um <laughs> so yeah like it's it, it's tough man but um a song that um that came to my mind right away you guys i know nobody will probably even know this but it's a guy his name is deontay hitchcock he's from um he's from atlanta mm -hmm. and he has a song called no secrets okay. and I, I just relate to it a lot in a lot of ways so, I mean, I like that song, but I'm really R&B through and through. I can't really pick a favorite song, man. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it, 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 oh, it gave us a nice chat, so, so, so I can't front on that answer. So. Okay, so Tone, thank you for the interview. It's, it's great that always. you're here with us. I always say that you're, you're a great articulate person. It's, it's, it's always a joy to <laughs> chat with you. I try to be, man. I appreciate the, the ride. I appreciate everything. And I know I wasn't talking this much. It's foggy in here. I know I wasn't talking that much, man. Don't do that. Ja teille siellä kotikatsomoissa tämän haastiksen tarjos nelipyörä ja Lahden pysäköinti viedään kiesi turvaa toriparkkiin.